Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlog's Meet and today Sally and I are going to be talking about saponification during the dilution of spirits. One of my viewers requested that I dive into the science of saponification. So yeah, here we go. Okay. First off, what is saponification exactly? This is the chemical reaction that is responsible for soap being made. So it's the reaction between fatty acids, most often triglycerides, and a strong base like sodium hydroxide to produce glycerol and soap. It's essential in the soap making process. However, it's a term that's been used perhaps incorrectly in the spirits industry. So those who haven't really heard about saponification in the context of distilled spirits, there is this belief out there that proofing down your spirits too quickly, right? Adding water too quickly to bring a spirit down to bottling proof can result in a saponification reaction that completely ruins your batch and makes your spirit taste like soap. So we're gonna look into this and do some, a little bit of scrutinizing here. So first of all, in order for saponification to occur, you need fatty acids or triglycerides. You need a basic medium, right? You need a strong base. And you also need time and the proper conditions for this reaction to occur. In the context of distilled spirits, right? There are some fatty acids in distilled spirits, especially those that are aged and unfiltered. But the concentration of these fatty acids is very low. It's in the PPM range. And most of these fatty acids are in the short to medium chain length, not these long chains, not triglycerides. Now, while theoretically these medium and short chain fatty acids could react with bases to form soaps, right? They could participate in the saponification reaction. So that means that even if there is a base present with the concentration of these short and medium chain fatty acids, if they do form soaps, it's going to be in such a low concentration that it would be below our detection levels, especially because these short and medium chain fatty acids, once they do form soaps, would stay dissolved in solution and meaning they wouldn't really present as that like soapy taste. So because we know that there are some fatty acids, a small concentration of fatty acids that exist in distilled spirits, those fatty acids are more likely to participate with other reactions. So there are other reactions that are going to be competing with saponification during the dilution process. As far as having a base in the solution goes, most of the water that's going to be added is most likely going to be like a demineralized, like highly pure water. Now, if we assume that spring water, right? Or, or maybe a really heavy mineral, high mineral content water is added to the spirit to dilute it, we can kind of look at what is inside that water, right? Theoretically speaking. So some spring water can contain bicarbonate ions, calcium or magnesium ions, and those could act as weak bases so theoretically, if these weak bases are participating in saponification reactions, we can kind of deduce that those reactions would happen really, really slowly and in even smaller quantities than if there was a strong base present with this small concentration of fatty acids present. The alcohol concentration in the spirit is also going to be high, right? A minimum of 40% ABV. So a minimum of 40% alcohol 
in this mixture and ethanol is not a favorable medium for saponification. Saponification also requires some of the conditions that it requires are high temperatures and an industry standard in the soap making process is to pretty much keep the temperature at boiling. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty standard. But saponification, like the temperature range, will be dependent on the reaction that is occurring. So this can range anywhere from 104 degrees Fahrenheit up to 212. So in theory, could the spirits be at this lower range, right near 104 degrees Fahrenheit? Could they be at that lower range? Like maybe, but it's very unlikely that they're within that range that is ideal for saponification. So given our low concentration of medium chain and short chain fatty acids that are present in the spirit and the possibility if you're adding spring water the possibility of adding in a weak base the time it would take for the saponification reaction to occur would be a very very long time and from what I have heard of the very like minimal accounts that I've heard of saponification occurring when proofing down spirits. It seems to be a pretty instantaneous thing. So when you're diluting spirits and you do so in a fast manner, you quickly dilute from say 62 and a half percent ABV down to 40% ABV and you have experienced, oh my gosh, my batch is ruined, it tastes like soap. If it's not saponification, what are the more likely things that can explain what just happened to your batch? There are other reactions that could be occurring. Some of those reactions could be like ester hydrolysis. Ester hydrolysis is when an ester and water come together and they produce a fatty acid or carboxylic acid and an alcohol. There are some esters out there, some medium chain fatty acid esters that can produce carboxylic acid that might taste a little bit waxy in higher concentrations. For example, when ethyl octanoate is hydrolyzed, it produces octanoic acid and octanoic acid can be responsible for this like waxy flavor, but that has to be at certain concentrations. Similarly, ethyl decanoate will hydrolyze to produce decanoic acid, also has this waxy flavor and texture associated with it. So is it possible that there's a little bit of some ester hydrolysis going on that in combination with maybe some of the floral flavor compounds within the spirit are resulting in the brain translating that into a soapy flavor rather than like a waxy texture soapy flavor like that could be one thing that's happening water quality will have a huge impact and i think that's pretty straightforward so possibly there's some type of like contamination within the water something like that there could also be pH changes that are impacting the solubility of some of these chemical compounds that are present. As you add in water, it's going to increase the pH of that spirit, which is already acidic, and perhaps that impacts the flavors that are being presented because it's impacting the solubility of those flavor compounds. Spirits can also undergo temperature shock. There is a little bit of an exothermic mixing when you combine water with alcohol that does raise the temperature but is it significant enough to actually cause temperature shock like i don't know depends on how fast you're adding it i guess depends on the temperature of the spirit depends on the temperature of the water that you're adding but temperature changes can also impact solubility of various compounds and thereby altering the like sensory aspect Those that claim saponification can or is occurring during the dilution of spirits also relate that to the spirit becoming cloudy or hazy or almost forming like a 
sediment-ish layer. And instead of this being related to saponification, because as I already discussed, right, if there is saponification occurring with the medium chain fatty acids and short chain fatty acids, they're most likely going to stay dissolved in the solution and not create hazy, cloudy looking spirit. So some of the things that could be happening are flocculation, precipitation, and luging. You've probably heard luging if you're an absinthe fan. Flocculation is the coming together of colloidal particles, which might occur due to rapid dilution. Similarly, precipitation is actually where those particles precipitate out of solution, which can also be caused by rapid dilution if those particles are less soluble in water. And luging is also due to solubility changes during dilution, where the spirit forms this like milky appearance. So in summary, I guess in summary, in conclusion, the conditions for saponification do not exactly exist in a distillery. So the likelihood of saponification occurring when you are diluting your spirits is very, 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 very low. What's more likely is you have a combination of a lot of other things happening. Other reactions such as ester hydrolysis could be happening where you are forming carboxylic acids that now result in these flavor changes. Maybe your water quality is not what it should be. Maybe your spirit is experiencing some temperature changes. If it's like a 10 degree Celsius difference, like maybe it is thermal shock. Maybe there are differences in the flavor compound interaction due to dilution. And then there is always the aspect of your brain and your expectations that definitely impact what you're smelling and tasting. So maybe if you are looking for some soapy characteristics, you might be finding them. Whether or not they're actual soaps in your spirit, which I highly doubt, it might just be that you're looking for them. With all that said, these are just theories. I would love to run some experiments. If I only had access to some analytical tools, I could definitely run those experiments, those chemical analysis experiments. But if you would like to see me actually run a taste test experiment where I'm using distilled water, tap water, mineral water, adding the waters quickly versus adding them very slowly over time and see what the flavor profile differences of those spirits are, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know. But I just want to conclude with this. If you are a distiller that has been proofing down your spirits really, really slowly because you are afraid of saponification occurring, rest assured that saponification is not your enemy here. Saponification is not the thing that's happening. There might be other things happening, so I'm not necessarily advocating for diluting your spirits very, very quickly. I'm not advocating for that. Maybe there are reasons and maybe there is a good scientific base for why we should be proofing really slowly. But so far, anyone who has claimed saponification, this is all just anecdotal evidence, right? It's not actually based in the science yet. So keep that in mind. All right, that is all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and to share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and let me know if you enjoyed diving into the chemistry of saponification and if you want me to dive even further into other aspects of the distilled spirits industry, please let me know. Before I go, I have to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. We've already started this discussion on saponification over on Patreon. So if you, the viewer, would also like to join us there, I've got a link in the description below and I would be so grateful if you did.